Hello class and welcome to chapter 3. In today's lecture we're going to be discussing ethical frameworks and its role in decision making. So let's get started. Organizations understand that behaving ethically is a key component of being successful in business. To this extent, the leaders, the top manager within organizations have taken concrete steps to ensure that the employees understand what the ethics are and what they mean for the company. The Human Resource Department is responsible for communicating these ethical standards and ensuring that employees follow them. To this extent, many organizations have developed code of ethics. This is a set of rules or guidelines which help employees understand right behavior from wrong behavior. Now, it's near impossible to identify every possible wrong doing or wrong action that an employee can make and thereby have rules set for every possible violation. So instead, what many organizations do is they focus on principles. They focus on sharing a set of principles that they say the organization stands for and how they expect each employee to behave and to understand those principles and measure their actions and behaviors against them to determine whether or not their actions are consistent or inconsistent with the ethical parameters of the organization. When someone is behaving unethically or doing something they shouldn't do, Organizations encourage employees to report them. In fact, they go through great efforts to make sure that employees have ways to share violations in an anonymous manner. Whistleblower rules and procedures are set up within organizations to protect the identities and to protect anyone who's reporting wrongdoing or for any form of uh, revenge or vindication. Moreover, the law actually has whistleblower protections and provisions as well. This is something that organizations take very seriously. I want to talk to you about three key terms at this moment, um, ethics, morality, and law. And we want to look at the differences between each of these terms. A lot of people use these terms and they may interchange them or use them incorrectly. We want to take a moment to ensure that you know how to use them and what they all mean, particularly as it relates to strategic management. So let's start off with morality. Morality is the, is the precepts of personal behavior based on a person's religious or philosophical beliefs. These are the rules that someone sets up to guide their own particular lives. This is very individualistic and it's understood at the individual level. Everyone's morality can differ. What you consider to be right or wrong for yourself can be very different from what for one another person considers to be right or wrong. This is where we get to the idea of relativism. And we talk about relativism in another lecture. Ethics, however, refers to a group level, a group of people, a department, an organization, anywhere where there's kind of a structured group of individuals who decided they need to work together to accomplish a particular goal or task, or simply just to be friends or interact with each other. As you can imagine, if everyone within the group is, has their own separate moral beliefs of what's right or wrong, what happens when the moral beliefs of one or two or, or more individuals begin to conflict? Whose behavior is correct? How do we navigate those particular situations? To this extent, groups develop their own set of rules for engagement, their own set of rules and behaviors for interacting and identifying correct or incorrect behavior. For example, let's say you have some friends. There are most likely there are some rules or guidelines of things that your friends should not do to one another. For example, perhaps it is lie. We don't lie to one another. We're friends, therefore we always tell each other the truth. Or, uh, we're friends, therefore we don't date one another's uh, significant others. We don't have any of those completely off limits. These are the part of the rules and guidelines that we have for our friendship. When those rules and guidelines are violated, then it's important that we have to figure out well, what happens now when it's violated. Nonetheless, the rules and guidelines that we have established as friends do exist. The next thing we'll talk about is the law. The law is a formal code that prohibits certain behaviors from taking place. It exists at the society level and is designed to protect everyone. Go back to the concept I said earlier with morality. Society can be comprised of thousands or hundreds of thousands or even millions of people. Each one has their own moral beliefs of right or wrong. Nonetheless, they have to all interact with each other. If there's not some sense of agreement on how we behave as a society, as a large group, then you run into a lot of conflict when one person's moral beliefs differs from another person's moral beliefs. There has to be some set of agreement on how we interact with one another at a societal level. And that agreement is a law. 
when it comes to the law, there are established rules for behavior. There are things that you cannot do because they are deemed now to be illegal. For example, stealing. We don't walk in and steal someone else's personal goods. That will be a violation of the law. The punishment for the law is typically imprisonment or fines. They'd find something that everyone values and they will take that from you. For example, everyone values freedom. So if I imprison you, then I've removed you from freedom. I've separated you from society. Or everyone, everyone values money. If you violate the law, then I'm going to take some of the money that you have because everyone universally values that. So the punishment has to be something that's meaningful and that's appropriate. When it comes to ethics and there's a violation, typically you would get removed from the group or some form of censorship. For example, if I work for an organization and I engage in unethical behaviors and the management, management finds out, maybe my behaviors weren't particularly illegal, but what they were was inappropriate and they were in violation of the rules for the group. What happens is that I'll be fired from the organization. Morality is a little different. Because morality is truly subjective and what's right or wrong at the individual level can differ from person to person. And at this level, we're not worried about how you interact with other people, but instead we're worried about how we interact with ourselves. When we violate our own sense of individual uh, self-defined right and wrong, we also punish ourselves. This punishment comes in the form of cognitive dissonance. We feel as though something is wrong within ourselves and we take time to examine ourselves and to try to get back on track. We also take, we also take significant efforts to align ourselves back with who we really truly are and to find ways to help justify and explain the sense of cognitive dissonance to the point where it no longer exists anymore. That wraps it up for this lecture. If you have any questions or comments, please email them to me or talk to me about them in class if we're meeting for a physical class. Other than that, don't forget to study, and I'll see you later.